Hello viewers, and welcome to another episode of Brierson Videos PC Gaming, where this week, it's Project Cars 2. Now, if for those of you who remember, I played Project Cars 1, which is the pre- which was the, uh, which this game, Project Cars 2, is the, uh, sequel to the last game, obviously. And this is, and when I first played Project Cars 1, I generally enjoyed it, I mean, it definitely did have some flaws, but it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. But that was before I discovered uh, R Factor 1 and 2, and then after I played R Factor 2, Project Cars was nothing compared to it, if you ask me. But after trying out uh, Project Cars 2, I have a little rule in place for British Videos PC game. This is for games I generally enjoy. However, though, oh boy, is Project Cars 2 just about enjoyable. But now, let me just start off by saying this. You can still have fun with this game. As long as you don't think about the issues that you're about to see within this sim. So, to start this off, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. I have the opponent skill set down to about 60 65% with AI aggression set to 80%. I had to turn the AI aggression up to max to get them to to get them to race. But you'll see what I mean on the circuit to Catalonia here. That we're about to go racing on. It's five laps around. And you will see what I mean by one or two certain issues in this game that I just have to point out. Because these are just one of these one or two issues that really bug me when playing this game. So here we are now, we're on the grid, we're starting in last place. You know, you know the rest. It's five laps. Let's go racing. So, we have five lights. I mean, five lights. Five lights. And it's away we go now here in the Circuit to Catalonia. I mean, look at this. Okay, well now here. Okay, in the GT3 cars, the AI are generally defending for position. So here we go now, into uh, turn one we go now. But you'll see what I mean coming up towards the end of lap one. About what I mean about the AI being not very good. I have mechanical damage uh, turned on, so that way... I can still be able to experience some uh, realistic damage. when I Or experience realistic damage when I crash into something or someone. Now, I know you're thinking, Brierson, we don't know what you're talking about here. But, you'll see what I mean coming up towards the uh, end of lap one if we get that in this race. Ouch. As the BMW uh, hits me from behind there. <laughs> Now, by the end of lap one, you'll see what I mean. I mean, there's still a bit of battling going on for the first lap here. Don't get me wrong, but... Wait till we get to the end of lap two, and you'll see what I... Wait till we get to the start of lap two, and you'll see what I mean now. By what I mean complaining about the... When I complained about the AI. Now, look at this. Look at this. The AI are just not racing each other anymore. They've raced each other for the first lap, and now they decide to slot in there for the rest of the race. The AI in Project Cars 2 is just bland, boring. They just don't overtake you. Well, they would overtake the player, yes, but it just... They don't overtake each other. There's just very little overtaking going on between the other AI opponents, which I find... annoying. So here we are now into uh, turn one. Okay, well, yeah, that Porsche did try to go for the move on that Genetta there, but... But there's just little to no racing going on between the AI there. That's what I find most annoying. That's what I just... That's what I find most annoying about this game. Okay, now, the Porsche there was trying to uh, make a move on the Genetta there. But overall, though, there's just little to no racing going on between the AI. I mean, even here, that Ferrari there up ahead should have had should have made the pass there, but it didn't. 
they're just not overtaking. I have the AI aggression set to 80, 85% or somewhere along the lines of that. And they're just not overtaking. Even on 100% AI aggression, there's just no racing going on between the AI. No, none whatsoever. Okay, well, I had a bit of a spinner spin off there. Oh, that 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 Bentley there uh, hit hit me there, but it has uh, knocked me back into the race. So, uh, big thank you to the uh, Bentley. Okay, now that 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 spin there was my own doing, so I can't give out to the, so I can't blame the game for that. Okay, now that that Honda there tried to uh, make a pass on me. So there is li racing going on between the uh, AI there. And now that AI has just made a mistake, and now that Ferrari has taken has taken the Honda NSX. But in general, though, there's just little to no racing going on between the AI. I mean, R Factor Two AI is more exciting than this. Now I'm not saying now I'm not saying R Factor Two's AI is perfect because that their AI also has uh, flaws. But all it takes is little adjustments. To get the AI working. This, however, though, in Project Cars 2, even with the major adjustments, they just do not race each other. I've adjusted the AI aggression and everything here, but they just don't race each other. That's the annoying part about this game. They just do not race each other. Okay, I went wide there. And now that Ferrari's about to make the move on me there. So that's that was my now, to be fair, the Ferrari did go for the over try to go for the overtake there, but now that time I, I went wide there. So that's not, so that's not, so that's my fault, not the, uh, not the game's fault. But yeah, in terms of, uh, race physics, or in terms of car physics, Slightly Mad Studios have stepped up in that department. But in terms of, but in terms of AI, they've stepped up as well. In, in terms of AI, you know, back in the last Project Cars game, the AI would just blatantly cut the corners without even, without even, and not give a damn, and not give a damn about them cutting the corners or not. But at the same time, though, they're still just dull and boring to race against. They just don't race each other. That's the biggest complaint about, that's my biggest complaint about this game. They just don't race each other. They just do not race each other in the least bit. However, though, in terms of positives, though, let's talk about the positives, though. Instead of me constantly ripping up the AI a lot. The graphics on this game, they're fantastic. they have It has way better graphics than what R Factor 2 and a set of Corsa provides. Including the including the, the, the details of the car and the textures and all. Fantastic. I would give this game... A solid 10 out of 10 for graphics and detail but for AI though it's just not the AI are just not there they just don't race each other so I'm giving the AI a 5 out of 10 Okay, now we're closing in on that uh, BMW there. Or at least I think we are anyway. Alright, I went wide there, but that's my own doing. Not the uh, not the AI's fault. Now that Ferrari's crashed into me there. Let's restart the race. Maybe I'm just not hitting the brakes hard enough. And we'll try again to... Uh, to have a good race. So here we are. We need the grid now here in the Circuit of Catalonia. And now, at the start of the race, the AI would def would be moving across the defense. But look! Look at this! I've made up half the places. Half of the field. I've taken half the field before we even got to turn one. I mean, look at the, look how much cars I am taking here. The AI don't even don't even get their act together until the end of until the end of lap one. And now I'm up at the P4 already because of it. The AI is just boring and dull to race against. 
Now before any of you think, now before any of you start comment, any of you guys start commenting down below saying, "Oh, Brayton, you just have the AI on the, on the low, on the low AI strength." But that's not the case. I've had the AI on the highest on at 90%, and they still, and I still take a load of the cars at the start. But now look, look at this. I'm now up with the P2 already, and the AI still haven't gotten their racks together. It's not until the end of lap one did the AI start finally pick up the pace. But anyway, we're coming up towards the end of lap one, and now again, again, the AI just don't race each other. Again, they're just following each other around. Which I find annoying, really. But now, let's talk about another positive about this game. Another positive is this camera view here. The camera view, this camera view basically is where you're racing inside the helmet. Not just inside the cockpit, but inside the helmet. Which is spectacular. You, get, you basically get to see what the race driver sees, pretty much. It's almost like wearing a virtual reality headset. Okay, now, okay, yeah, I did cut the corner there. So, better slow down. So let's try and catch back up to that BMW. But as I was saying, the helmet cam in this game is awesome. You're basically inside the helmet of the driver. You've got one on your tail. Better defend that position. Well, it's good to be working with uh, Johnny again from Project Cars 1. He's still, he's still his uh, passionate self that he was back in uh, Project Cars 1. So uh, that hasn't changed much, which is good. I like how Johnny is still... His uh, passionate self that he was back in uh, Project Cars 1. I actually enjoyed listening to him back in the first Project Cars game. And now that he's back in Project Cars 2, I really enjoyed listening to uh, Johnny. But anyway, though, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. As I was saying before, I was interrupted twice there. The, the helmet cam there is spectacular. You're basically seeing what the driver sees there. It's almost like using a virtual reality headset nearly. Or this is the closest you're going to get to experiencing virtual reality. Sometimes I enjoy uh, racing in the helmet cam view. Which does add that level of uh, realism to this game. I mean, how come R-Factor 2 doesn't have this uh, camera view is beyond me. But I'm sure uh, maybe Studio 397 could maybe come up with a solution and try introduce a camera view like that. But then again, that might be a bit difficult for Studio 397 to do, but who knows? Maybe they might come up with a camera view like this one here in Project Cars 1 and Project Cars 2 to add that extra level of realism to this game. But in general, in terms of AI, there, it's just nowhere near as good as R Factor 2 is. Now, some, I'm not, let me just clarify here. I am not in any way being biased towards R Factor 2 in any way because I understand that even R Factor 2 has flaws and I know that and I know that all racing sims have their level of realism that appeal to uh, various racers to a ver to various sim racers but Project Cars 2 just doesn't have that level of realism in my opinion it just doesn't it just doesn't have that level of AI in Project Cars in Project Cars 2 is what I meant I mean, R Factor 2 nails the AI perfectly, but even R Factor 2's AI has issues. But they don't require as much tweaking as it does in uh, Project Cars 2. <coughs> Sorry, I had I, my throat was uh started to become a bit tickly there. But here we are. We're chasing down this uh, Mercedes here as coming into the uh, final few corners to finish. Lap 3 and go on to lap 4. Okay, I cut the corner a bit there, so I'm probably going to get towed by the... Yep, there it is. There it is. I imagine... I, I had a feeling I was going to get towed by the uh, race director to slow down. And now that BMW has pulled away from me even more now. 
No, sorry. Is it a Mer it's either Mercedes or BMW. I forgotten. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a Mercedes. Pardon me. Oh, I went wide there, but okay. Now that time, that was my own fault. I can't blame the game for that because me going wide there, that was my own fault. So I can't give out the, give out to the game for that. But I've retaken uh, P2 now, and I'm up into a. Uh, I've retaken the Renault there, and I'm back up into uh, P2 again. As we continue chasing down this uh, Merc, the Mercedes there ahead of me. Oh, Nelly! Oh, lucky save there. But yeah, in terms of physics, it's still a bit... The physics engine in this game still is a bit wonky. But not as wonky as it was back in uh, Project Cars 1. They have... So slightly my studios have stepped up in terms of the physics engine. Uh, I, I'll tell you one thing. I am really enjoying myself racing in this uh, helmet cam view. It, this helmet cam view is just spectacular. How come how come our factor two doesn't have this camera is beyond me? Don't worry, Johnny. I'll try find a way past him. Yeah. Ah, oh, no. Although me cutting the corner there was dumb. Well, that was pretty dumb of me there to cut cut the corner. I've now pretty much thrown away the win. I've pretty much thrown away the win. Unless I could try and find a way to catch back up to the Mercedes. <clears throat> yeah, he's yeah, Johnny is definitely more passionate about about racing now than he was back in uh, Project Cars 2, so he must be more hyped up now for for Project Cars 2 than he was back for the for racing now than he was back in a uh, Project Cars 1, which is good. I like race engineers. Great driving, mate. I like race engineers who are passionate. He's not like uh, Jeff from, from the F1 games. Well, he's more passionate than Jeff from the F1 games. Now, can I take, can I take uh, the Mercedes here? I could try a late dive bomb, but no. Oh, it's gonna be close. I can still take him. No, I can't. I can't. So it looks like the Mercedes is gonna take home P1 while I take home P2. So, a good race. Good race. Well, not a good race, actually. It was pretty boring. I made up half of the field there. And the AI didn't do anything to stop me. Now, one other thing I wanna show you. Oh, those are the uh, rally cars, which I will show you later on, but but there's just one other thing that I want to show you about this game that another thing that annoys me a lot. So here, are, we're going to take a GT3 car and we're, we're racing the, we're going to race the Porsche. We're racing the 488, so we're gonna be so we're gonna be driving around uh, Mount Panorama. This is another thing that annoys me about Project Cars 2: the crash physics. I've ripped into the AI now. I'm about to rip into the crash physics of this game. You'll see what I mean when we get to the top of the hill in Bathurst. 
Don't worry, I'm going now, uh, Johnny. Let's switch out. Let's switch into this uh, into the regular uh, cockpit view. The detail in these cars, though, amazing. You can see the little the little tiny details in there, which is fantastic. They've included the tiniest details slightly Mad Studios have in this game, so that's that I can give plus points for. In which I. Uh, Which I had a bit of a spinner there, but that's because I'm I'm going I'm on cold tires here. All right, I'm sliding all over the place a bit, but that's because I'm on uh, cold tires, so I can't blame the game for that. That's that's actually w what you experience in a real racing situation when you're going on your outlap. The tires are cold. Okay, I hit off the wall there. But you'll see what I mean when we get to the top of this hill. Yeah, did you see what I did you see there? The car just the car just as soon as I hit the wall there, the car just grinded off the wall. Here, I'll show you again. There, as you can see, it just stuck to the wall there as I and just and just slid across it. The crash physics in this game is boring. So that's two things boring about this game: the crash physics and the AI. Look at this. Again, though. Again, I'll show you. Going into the wall, face first. I just stand. I just sl slide off the wall there. That's not how a real car is supposed to crash. Again, there we are. Slid into the wall again. It's like it's like the walls are some kind of magnetic field. That's not that. The, that's, that that doesn't happen in a real racing situation. The walls aren't that magnetic in real life. Here we are again. I'll show you now when we come onto a straight wall here. And turning that into a wall again. The crash physics is just blocky. It doesn't. I don't feel the car. Like I don't. The crash physics in this are just boring. Just boring, if you ask me. Again, I'll show you again here. Again, it's like it's like the car's on rails when it hits the wall. That's that's what that's why that's a that's one thing that's another thing annoying about this. When I hit the wall, it's like the car is on rails. Anyway, though, what else was I going to do? Oh, yeah. I was going to do a uh, custom race in the Formula A cars. Because this, 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 this is another thing that proves my point about, about the AI. Not about me making up half of the fields. I'm racing this on a uh, 60. Let's just, let's increase the AI strength a bit. We'll increase up to 73. I mean, even on the highest AI strength, they're still not. They're still not giving me a race here. I like AI that give that let that, that I get to race against. That gives me something. That gives me a challenge. That gives me something to race against. And there's somebody uh, texting me there. Just want to see who, where this text mess, who's texting me there, and then I will get back to you guys then. Okay, I've uh, texted uh, one of my friends there on uh, Steam. But now we're about to approve my point here about the AI, especially in the Formula A cars. We're doing five laps once again, and we'll switch this view here because I find it very difficult to race in to race in open wheel cars in the cockpit view. But look at this. Look at this here. The AI just not overtaking each other. They're following each other in two parallel lines. They're not fighting each other or defending for the position as if as if the local shop is having a closing down clearance sale and now they're and that they're selling everything for 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 the cheapest price prices possible. That's not happening here. They're just following each other on parallel lines. And look, even the DRS on this. The DRS, they're using the DRS whenever they bloody well feel like it. That's not supposed to happen in Formula 1. Oh, oh, is your man hit me there in the back? Not sure what he was, not sure what your, not sure, not sure what that uh, Formula A car was trying to do. 
And again, though, same deal as like back in the GT3s. The AR are following each other here. They're just following each other around. This is not real racing. That's not real racing if the AI are just following each other around as if as if we're in a traffic jam here. Anyway, so here we are now. We're currently uh, here in Circuit de Catalunya once again in Spain. And look, the AI are, are using are using the DRS even when going around corners. Every time when I try to do that, I spin off. That's not supposed to. That's not what's supposed to happen. All right, I spin off there, but you kind of get my point about how how the AI behave in Project Cars too. But there's one thing though I do I but there's one thing there is one new thing though that they have added into this game and that is the rally cross events. So for example we'll take the uh, dirtfish course and then we'll race in a uh, rally car so let's find a rally car. WRX there we go. Take any of these uh rally cars. Uh we'll take the focus the Ford Focus there was a uh, pretty fun car to drive. <sighs> now, we'll go into the uh, cop view once again. But driving the Ford Focus around, especially the some, especially the rally cars here, were were lots of fun to drive. But they are very hard to uh, get the car to uh, slide in this game than it is back in so many other rally games that I tried, like a uh, dirt rally. I haven't done an episode on it. Okay, well I've hit the tire barriers there now. My steering wheel has a uh, gone out of place on me there, so I need to uh, fix it. Now, let me just uh, restart the session there. Restart session, yes. There we go. Can't return to the uh, pit box or anything in this game. Or maybe it's just a track that I'm on. Maybe that might. Oh well. Yeah, hit the tire barriers there. Okay, when you're hitting the tire barriers, the crash risks aren't too bad. But when you're hitting, but when you hit an iron car barrier like that one, like the one, like the one beside me, the crash risks are just dull and boring. Like even there, again, I hit the tire barrier there, but I just stuck to the wall there. That's not what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to bounce off the wall there when I crash. Here we are, let's take a jump and hey! Over the jump we go. Now let's go ahead and take a joker lap. But yeah, though, in terms of the uh But yeah, for the rally car for the rally cars though, they are generally fun to drive around this game. On this game. But still though. It still doesn't have this, but still not at the same level I say uh, R Factor 2 is. Again, I hit the tire barrier, but I, but I, but I stick to the wall there. All right, nice big jump there, but I lose control. Right, I'll, I'll end the session uh, there now, but. But this, but that's a new thing that's been added to uh, Project Cars 2 is the uh, rally cross, and so far they're lots of fun to uh, the rally cars are fun to drive on. But anyway, that is Project Cars 2, a step up, a decent step up from the last Project Cars 1 game. Or sorry, let me start, let me say that again. A decent step, a decent step up from the last game. But as long as you don't think about the issues that I have presented to you in Project Cars 2, you can still have fun with this game.
So, uh, I thank you for watching now, and I will see you guys in my next video.